All right, good afternoon, guys. So a new addition to the HAG series. We're gonna be working on some more running prep, which is gonna be talking about our hamstrings, abs, adductors, and glutes. Today we're gonna be warming up with some more calf and ankle and footwork. So here we're gonna be doing, um, we're doing our double leg calf raise here without a support. Normally I would add a stick or something like that for balance, but I did not have one with me, so we're gonna be learning how to do it freehand here. So you can see as I'm rotating through this pattern here is the band is adding a slight plane bias to the ankle positioning. So what I'm trying to do is keep my rib cage stacked right over top of my hip bones. I'm trying to keep my knees internally rotated slightly, keeping them stacked over top of the ankle. And I'm trying to battle that internal external plane bias and prevent my ankle from caving. So what you're trying to do here is keep your ankle centered through that shin as you're, ex as you're extending through and trying to plant, push that button on the end of your big toe. So the big toe is very important here where you wanna try and really try to push that button and try to flex that arch of the foot because as soon as you lose that big toe and as soon as you lose the toes, the arch, arch of the foot shuts off and the ankle loses a layer of stability. So what this is working on is not just those plantar fascial muscles directly in the center of the foot. Now we're starting to work onto those lateral stabilizers that make up the both sides of the arch of the foot. Now, this is where you get your side to side lateral stability. How many people do you see who can run straight forward and as soon as you ask them to change direction, their ankles break? Uh, this, is, this is by design specifically because they're, they're missing some layers of stability at the foot and they're proprioceptionally distarted from the actual backside of the foot and the sides of the foot. So one thing that we actually want to keep in mind here is that arch of the foot is very important in running, jumping, walking, and as well as stabilizing isometrically as you're working through a squat or a deadlift or anything that you need to be stuck to the ground. So this is very important to understand where these muscles are in charge of running mechanics, but it's going to apply to most other things we do in day-to-day -day life. Um, this drill here is very, very difficult, but it's you start feeling each one of those individual tendons and muscle structures along each side of the foot. The next thing that we're going to be looking into is another plane bias here. So we're doing our active leg raise where I'm driving my trail heel into the ground, flexing my calf, hamstring, glute, trying to keep my abs nice and flat. And I'm actively trying to use my hip flexor and my oblique as well as my adductor on this other side here while trying to maintain my foot in a very strict pattern directly in line with the hip bone. So I'm not getting any uh, any vertical forward backward pull here. The only pull that this band is really adding is some, it, it's some adding some side to side motion here. So I have to keep that adductor in line. So this is very important anytime we're trying to really kind of bulletproof the adductors, bulletproof the hips and everything like that. We're also gonna do this the reverse way where it's gonna be working a little bit through that glute as well as a little bit of that TFL and kind of that uh, hip stabilizer. So this is also what we're gonna notice is a lot of obliques. This is a lot of internal external obliques here because it's very hard to maintain this hip positioning. And you, under, you start understanding where your real hamstring mobility is while you're keeping one leg active. So it's not just where you can pull your, your leg into and how far you can yank your foot up towards the ceiling, but it's more so where can you safely move to and safely come back from. This is optimally gonna be a big determining factor in your more explosive movement patterns. Uh, where can you stop yourself? Can you stop yourself before you injure yourself or are you going past the line way too many times and we start accumulating too much uncontrolled motion under this umbrella and now we have an injury so what we're trying to do here is accumulate and trying to erase as much of that unaccompanied uncontrolled motion as possible so we want to control every pattern that we kind of have in our arsenal and all the ones we're going to need for big lifting or even just general stabilization this next one here 
I'm trying to work a little bit through the hips as more because internal rotation is something that me personally, I lag very much. I did wide stance lifting, wide stance squatting for a very, very long time, very much stuck in external rotation. And that's been a big thing to fixing my back. But what we're working on here is trying to get those adductors firing. And as you see here, I gain a little bit of a leverage point as I start working through as I get, yeah, see right there, a little more internal rotation. So trying to bring your knee up in line with your ankle is gonna get you to that balance of that glute medius adductor. And you're gonna be mobilizing this hamstring and these hips as well. So if you can't tell, I'm trying to pull my torso down to my hips and trying to keep my sit bones flat on the ground as long as I can and as frequent as I can during this pattern without losing my positioning. So next to finish up with a little bit of cardio, just some simple beast crawls here. Now you can actually see this is a position I've been trying to work on, especially where the serratus here at the top of the rib cage doesn't always like to close all the way down. So the goal with these is we're transferring alternate leg, alternate arm, and you're trying to push off that arch of the foot and push off that toe and keep your knees nice and tight into yourself. So trying to not let those knees externally rotate, you wanna keep them nice and tight towards your midline and move through your abs, move through your adductors, keep your ribs nice and tight, transfer through your hands. Start understanding where your endpoints are and where your energy transfers kind of are. All right, guys, that's just some things that I was working on today. Another addition to the HAG series. Give them a try. See how you feel.